Introdu introduce yourself. Sure, I'm Patrick Murphy from the 8th Congressional District of Pennsylvania. I'm wearing my uh, 82nd Airborne pin. That's the unit I served with in Baghdad six summers ago in 138th Raheem. And unfortunately, uh, that's where 19 of my fellow paratroopers uh, had never made it home. And what do you feel now that uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, your sponsor, um, to repeal this? Uh, how do you feel the um, debate is going to go? Uh, I am very confident that as we lead the fight to repeal the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, we're going to be successful. Successful getting it through the Congress and on the President's desk. And President Obama has promised, has took an oath and said that he will sign that piece of legislation to finally, after 16 long years, to repeal the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. I just came back from Iraq and Afghanistan, and I will tell you, uh, so many troops grabbed me to the side and said, hey, Congressman, hey, Patrick, keep fighting, because this policy is wrong, and we need you to change it. And you think that the leadership in the military is ready as well? Well, you know, the, the military leadership takes notes to support and defend the Constitution, and they take their orders from the Commander-in-Chief. And, and, you know, if the Commander-in-Chief uh, signs in a law that we're repealing Don't Ask Hotel, and the Commander-in-Chief says to his Secretary of Defense and his Chairman and Twin Chiefs of Staff, which President Obama has already done, and said, guys, get ready to implement this thing because it's changing, because it's coming from the Congress, they will execute, they will salute sharply, and they will execute the mission given to them. And that is to make sure that we respect people in our military, no matter what race they are, no matter what color they are, religion they are, or sexual orientation they are. And um, what do you say to people who um, think that the president should sign an executive order uh, to try to uh, stop the discharges while Congress uh, handles the question of it? Yeah, and listen, people have their opinion. That's what America is about. You know, my focus has been to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It was a law that was implemented by the Congress and needs to be repealed by the Congress. You know, for those criticisms of President Obama, you know, I look at history. I mean, I taught this at West Point. In the 1950s, when half our country, by the way, was still segregated, our military was ahead of social change, and the president signed an executive order to repeal it. But that executive order by President Truman wasn't inconsistent with U.S. law. President Obama, unlike, frankly, President Bush, respects a co-equal branch of government. President Obama respects U.S. law. President Obama has gone to the Congress and folks like myself and said, Patrick, we need you to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I'm going to sign it when you get on my desk, and that's what my focus has been. Do you think that it's okay to have a public whip count so people can see how things are going? Yes, and that's why I ask people to go on letthemserve.com. Mm -hmm. That's my website. Again, letthemserve.com. Look at the, what the whip count is. Look at who's my co-sponsors. I have 168 co-sponsors right now. And if your congressman or congresswoman isn't on it, I ask you, please, call their office, email them, write them letters. Write letters to the editor of why it makes no sense why we've kicked out over 13,000 troops since we implemented Don't Ask, Don't Tell. That's over three and a half combat brigades when our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan are stretched so thin. Over 60 Arabic translators. I tell you, the senior leadership, folks like Colin Powell, was one of the authors of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, has even come and said now, listen, it's time to reevaluate this thing. We need to change and repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And the, to think that felons, gang members, and all are serving while qualified um personnel are being discharged is, is a tragedy. Yeah, and this, I, I will say that our American men and women who serve our country in Iraq and Afghanistan and throughout the globe, they're our heroes. Mm -hmm. We need to support them. Mm -hmm. And we need to let all Americans serve uh, and have respect for, for different upbringings, including someone's sexual orientation. And what do you think um, that and during the next set of hearings, uh, the people on the other side are going to present? After all, last, uh, last time around, Elaine Donnelly testified uh, quite uh, candidly and uh, humorously. Um, it did not do the other side much justice. Yeah, well, listen, I have respect for Ms. Donnelly. You know, I, I don't appreciate the fact that she now questions my military service. And I don't, frankly, appreciate the fact that she doesn't think the American soldier is as professional as the 26 other countries that allow their troops to serve openly. But listen, that's what America is America for. And she's entitled to her opinion and her, even if I think that opinion is wrong. And, um, you know, I, I anticipate a strong fight from the forces of the status quo. I understand it. Uh, you know, but I didn't come to Congress to be nice to everybody and just go along and get along. I came to Congress to make sure I fight for the values and the principles that I believe in and how I was raised and where I think our country needs to go. And where our country and our military needs to go is in a country that allows everyone to serve openly as long as they can get the job done. And when I served in Baghdad six years ago, I will tell you that the paratroopers in the 82nd Airborne Division, they didn't care what race, color, creed, 
sexual orientation someone was. They care whether or not you could fire an M4 assault rifle. Could you kick down a door? Could you get your job done so that we would all come home alive? That's what they cared about, not what the others, the forces of the status quo, care about. Thank you for your time, Congressman. I hope you catch your flight. Thanks, Pam.